in Mom's arms. I murmured protests about the dimming day and the heavy rain outside the airport. The air was foggy with a warm mist. The anticipation of seeing my mom made my legs rubbery with anxiety and eagerness. The rain drenched my clothes and sluiced my face of what little makeup I had on, sopping away what was left of my spirit. Rushing towards the entrance, my trudging steps sloshed up gouts of sullied water, logging my shoes into heavy iron boots. Goose pimples pebbled my sticky skin, and I couldn't shake the damp chill. I hurried through a set of revolving doors into a deafening exodus of people. Hurrying commuters appeared as darkened figures passing by in flickering waves. I cloaked my face with my hair and searched for Mom, but toiled doing both. The airport seemed to grow louder and louder, making my anxiety bubble up in desperation. Where is she? Mom's plane had already landed, but in the startling throng of happy faces, I couldn't find her. I became uneasy as the multitudes began to spin around me. Lumps of fear rose up in my throat and my heart began to race frantically. I was becoming unhinged, close to completely losing it, falling to the ground and shielding my ears with my hands while rocking back and forth. Abruptly, a very distinctive page blared out from the airport intercom, making a nostalgic laugh escape me. Frank pervert, you have a message on the white courtesy phone. My heart leapt with relief and joy. Yes, mom's here. The purely fictional Frank, who suffered from imaginary perversion, was our comical inside airport code. It was how we typically announced to each other that we were there. I took in a deep, healing breath and sprinted towards the phones. The message repeated, ringing out with its concealed conviviality. Frank pervert, you have a message. Puzzled faces suddenly looked up, diverted by the bizarre page and understandably waiting for it to be recited again. Their incomprehension made me laugh even harder. It had been so long since I had cracked up laughing or even smiled. Unmistakably, noticing the sensation of happiness at the page brings me to tears. Even my emotions are frustratingly ambivalent. In my urgent need, I found nurturing love where I had least expected it. Mom spent a few consoling days with me and then returned to Colorado to package up her possessions. I needed her. We shared a mysterious and unexplainable connection. I was never giving up on her, and she didn't give up on me. Days later, far too quickly, we were back at the airport. Mom's plane was boarding for departure. While I prudently regarded the airport's carpet, Mom noticed the gloomy expression on my face. She gently lifted my chin, grinned, and started to lightheartedly sing, Have I told you lately that I love you? As she vociferously crooned with cheerfulness, my heart liquefied with affection for her. I flared back. Got brass in pocket. I'm special, special, so special. We both gleamed as we mingled our impression of the bop, some injured-looking calypso, and the twist in a kitschy jig presentation in front of God and everyone in the airport. We laughed at ourselves, but settled back into existence as a lofty flight attendant called for all rows to board. Mom took a few steps toward the embarking area and turned around to say goodbye one last time. I blew her a kiss. She pretended to watch the illusory smooch and then thrust out her hand as if to forcefully seize it. Say bye-bye to Grandma. I bobbed my small belly up and down vigorously. A widespread grin materialized on Mom's face. I'm certain that both of us were thankful we would only be temporarily separated. Around the fifth month of my pregnancy, Mom and I found a charming two-bedroom apartment in Texas. It wasn't easy to help Mom form a normal domestic lifestyle, but as long as she religiously took her amitriptyline medication, the other Mom was held at bay. If I wasn't working, Mom and I were together, especially during those last exhausting weeks. She had become attentive and caring, accompanying me to most of my final doctor visits. She'd fluff pillows under my swollen feet and demand that I eat well and get plenty of rest. I loved how she frequently hugged me from behind, kissing my cheek. She couldn't take the pain of losing Kirk away, but we loved a lifetime's worth in those gratifying months. In spite of our budding relationship, I loudly learned months later that Mom was continuing to scam landlords, never once paying rent. I should have known better. There was always a reason to chronically worry about Mom. As an unspecified team, I felt like we had risen and fallen. I was in disbelief when the stone-faced landowner vehemently bawled me out one day when I was seven months pregnant. The level of his cursing could have made a young Eddie Murphy blush. 
I may have been unaware, but felt responsible for her repetitively unscrupulous behavior. I said nothing as he justly cussed me out. Afterwards, I folded my arms at our kitchen table and rested my head on them in defeat. I openly prayed for mom to seek principles with appropriate discernment, or at least to care for her own well-being as she cared for me. My skin bristled. It was time to move again.